Vladimir Putin has ruled over Russia for over two decades. But when Putin is gone, who will rule Russia next? Will Russia pass into the hands of another hawkish ruler? Or will an anti-Putin successor win the throne? The future of the world depends significantly on who replaces Putin. A bloody and prolonged war in Ukraine and rumours of Putin's ill health have reignited the hopes and ambitions of those who see themselves as Putin's heirs. Putin is more and more isolated. There is a brutal war for power in the Kremlin. Clearly he is seriously ill. When Putin is gone, who will succeed him? Who would replace Putin? While war rages in Ukraine, a secret battle is on in the Kremlin. The last man standing will be Russia's next ruler. Will Putin's successor be a member of his inner circle or his opposition? Many of those in Putin's inner circle, known as the Siloviki, worked in the KGB along with Putin. Putin has retained an iron grip on Russia since 1999 as either president or prime minister. But as the war in Ukraine drags on, there is discontent growing not only among those who seek peace, but also amongst those who are close to Putin. The Russian independent news outlet Medusa has cited several sources close to the Russian presidential administration to say that several officials are increasingly upset with Putin. Russian hawks are reportedly dissatisfied with the pace of Putin's special military operation in Ukraine. And a future after Putin is being secretly discussed by many in the Kremlin. Putin's potential successors can be divided into two categories. The first includes hardliners and extremists, or the hawks, who, just like Putin, feel the West has been trying to isolate and break Russia for decades, who want to be more assertive and aggressive in order to reach their goal of a globally dominant Russia. The second category includes the West-inclined candidates, or the anti-Putin. These leaders would integrate Russia more with the West, and in that sense, are the antithesis of what Putin stands for today. The hawks are men moulded by Putin's decades-long reign, his continual crackdown on political opponents and elections that are alleged to be rigged. They're mostly born in the 1950s and follow the ideology that portrays the West as an enemy, Ukraine as a threat, and Russia as a bulwark of traditional values. The hawks operate on the basis that Putin himself will choose his successor. So they model themselves on him to try and demonstrate that they will preserve his legacy loyally. Analysts feel Putin's successor could be just as dangerous or even more dangerous than he has been. Nikolai Patrushev, one of Putin's closest associates through the years, is a hardline conservative fellow and former KGB officer. Some analysts have even called him the most hawkish of the hawks. Many at the Kremlin, in fact, see the head of Russia's Security Council, the leader of the hawks, as successor to Putin. Patrushev has been building up his rhetoric on Russia's cultural sovereignty being at risk, its traditional values being under active attack by the United States and its allies. He believes that the collapse of the Soviet Union totally untied the hands of the Western neoliberal elite, allowing it to impose its morally decaying values upon the world. This Putin loyalist has even described the Russophobia in Ukraine as a result of a Western propaganda campaign. Like Putin, Patrushev sees Russia as a nation destined to regain its status as a bulwark against the West. And just like Putin, Patrushev glorifies the Soviet ideal and wants Ukraine and other post-Soviet countries to remain under Moscow's sphere of influence. Russia's 64-year-old defense minister is Russia's second most popular political figure after Putin. Russians have even hailed him as the country's greatest military leader after the Second World War general, Georgi Zhukov. Shoigu, in fact, is almost always seen at Putin's side, even on Putin's hunting and fishing trips to Siberia. Analysts say Shoigu is not only in charge of the military, but also partly in charge of shaping Russian ideology. 
Over the years, Shoigu has successfully carried out campaigns to annex Crimea, campaigns in Syria and in the Donbas region. Putin's long-time confidant Shoigu is considered one of the architects of the war in Ukraine and although his war rhetoric has been muted, he has certainly pushed Putin's anti-West agenda. Несмотря на масштабную помощь Запада киевскому режиму, и санкционного давления на Россию продолжим специальную военную операцию до полного выполнения всех задач. Shoigu has personally overseen Russia's military campaign in Ukraine. In fact, he's even called Ukrainian nationalists non-humans. Russia's foreign intelligence chief Sergei Narishkin is also a former KGB officer and has known Putin since the 1990s. Narishkin is a hardliner who's reportedly fond of conspiracy theories. He also heads the Russian Historical Society and has proved very crucial in providing the Russian president with ideological grounds for his actions. Narishkin recently compared Ukraine's pro-Western government to Hitler's occupation, describing it as a true dictatorship. President of the State Duma, Vyacheslav Volodin is a Putin loyalist who's also in the race to become Russia's next president. Ever since Volodin has been appointed to the State Duma, he's stepped up his rhetoric and aggression to project himself as a contender. Volodin has stirred controversy with his threats to the US that Russia would take back Alaska in response to sanctions. He's also called the US president sick and miserable. Volodin has condemned those opposing the war, calling them traitors. It was Volodin who demanded that Russia be paid for natural gas and other goods in rubles. Experts say Volodin understands Putin very well and is doing exactly what he knows the Russian president would approve of. The Russian media has claimed that Volodin aspires to become Vladimir Putin's successor one day and is ready to work for it. Volodin has even been quoted as saying that after Putin there will be Putin. Among the host of Russian hawks the most intriguing figure is former president ex prime minister and current deputy chairman of Russia's security council Dmitry Medvedev It is noteworthy that the man who hates the west is much less hostile towards Russia's western enemies It's only recently that Medvedev reinvented himself as a hawk and began making harsh anti west statements In 2008 when Dmitry Medvedev was picked by Putin to succeed him as Russia's president He was seen as a more liberal figure, as a non-communist who backed real reforms in Russia. Although a staunch Putin ally, Medvedev has clashed with the Russian president in public on several occasions in the past. Back in 2008, he promised modernization and liberalization and frequently spoke of his love for blogging and gadgets. Мы не дадим провокаторам и экстремистам втянуть общество в свои авантюры. Не допустим и вмешательства извне. в наши внутренние дела. России нужна демократия, а не хаос. In fact, Medvedev was once known for his interest in rock music and the possibilities of the internet. In 2010, on a visit to the Silicon Valley, Medvedev was in fact gifted a new iPhone 4 by Steve Jobs. Following Russia's brief military conflict with Georgia in August 2008, Medvedev proposed a new European security architecture to redefine Europe in ways that are more inclusive of Russia and its interests. In 2010, Medvedev and former US President Barack Obama signed a treaty that aimed to curb the use of nuclear weapons. But Putin allowed him to serve only one term. Since then, Medvedev has changed his tune with frequent attacks on the West. Analysts say Medvedev's changed persona is an attempt to regain political relevance in Russia and prove himself the best contender for the top post. At the other end of the spectrum are some of Russia's political and business elites who've chosen to distance themselves from the war. They're perhaps counting on a different outcome to the Ukraine war or on a future where the West has a greater influence on Russia's politics. These leaders think that once the war is over, those who haven't insulted hostile western countries or directly participated in the war will be better placed to take charge of Russia. Russia's current prime minister Mikhail Mishustin is seen as a potential successor to the man who's ruled Russia for the past two decades. This technocrat has been charged with keeping the Russian economy running. 
Before being appointed the Prime Minister, Mishustin spent a decade serving as Russia's tax chief without voicing any greater political ambitions. It's believed that Mishustin almost never speaks out on matters beyond his immediate area of responsibility. In fact, those who knew him in the 90s said he never discussed politics. This is believed to be largely because many Russians thought they had defeated the main enemy, the communists, and were on the path to joining Europe and becoming part of the Eurocentric civilization. Some Russian sources have even said that Mishustin was part of the club that was liberal, pro-Western, pro-open internet. Потому что я считаю, что правительство должно чувствовать, что с него всегда будет спрос. А открытая конструктивная критика помогает нам лучше работать. Sources close to the Putin administration describe Mishustin as the faction leader among Russian officials who prefer to say nothing about the war in Ukraine. On the 21st of February, the Prime Minister was one of just three top officials who had spoken in favor of continuing security talks with the West. In fact, Mishustin reportedly came to know about the full-scale war in Ukraine on the 23rd of February, the day before Russia launched the invasion. Reports claim Mishustin decided to keep working but to publicly distance himself from the special military operation. Sergey Sobyanin, the mayor of Moscow for the last 12 years, has proven himself to be a viable candidate. The former governor of the Tumen province has long been viewed as one of the most influential men in the country. Sobyanin has overseen a massive reconstruction program in Moscow to turn it into a modern European city. According to reports Moscow's economy accounts for roughly 40% of Russia's total GDP. Russian liberals see him as a figure who can replace the Russian president. Like Mishustin Sobyanin too has been notably tight-lipped about Putin's special military operation in Ukraine. Sobyanin did appear at Putin's pro-war rally in a Moscow stadium in March but hasn't been seen calling for Nazism to be crushed. Experts say Sobyanin has chosen to refrain from being actively involved in this anti-West propaganda. However, being silent has its own risks. If Putin requires complete commitment from all bureaucrats on his military campaign, their silence can be held against them. Putin's biggest challenge could emerge not from his inner circle, but from his much oppressed opposition. Alexei Navalny is globally recognized as the face of Russian opposition to Putin. Some analysts say Putin views Navalny as an existential threat. He is a man Putin has allegedly tried to poison. The Russian dissident has spent over a decade trying to overthrow Putin. The 46-year-old rose to prominence as an anti-corruption blogger and is widely seen as an alternative to the Russian president. Despite Putin's near invincible aura, Navalny has managed to mobilize tens of thousands to hold anti-government protests across the country. Soon after Moscow began its invasion of Ukraine, the jailed Kremlin critic called for nationwide anti-war protests. bringing thousands on the streets but there are hundreds of others who don't endorse navalny's views some who have worked with him in a russian liberal party see him as the most dangerous man in the country the anti putin leader is largely seen as an ultra nationalist a reputation he has gained over the years putin's antithesis is a long way away from being putin's nemesis on the surface putin holds complete sway over moscow and it is almost tantamount to treachery to speculate on who will succeed him but behind the scenes the whispers and power games are on in full swing in the corridors of the kremlin